I'm Greg Garbus of Four Season Tools. We're working on installing an automated sidewall ventilation system here at Chatham University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We just got uh, the boxes in that contain all the components, the major electronical and control components for the ventilation system. So I wanted to uh, show kind of, a, kind of how this works and how to talk through the process. First thing to be aware of is the box itself. These are expensive and fragile components, so they should be handled with care. There is actually a note on here from the vendor that talks about the fact that if this box shows up, it's damaged in any way to actually refuse the shipment um, and then go ahead and get it replaced. It's really important because once you open the box, if you find that there was exterior damage to the box, it can be difficult to get those components replaced. Um, on, the, on the cover, they also throw in a packing list that talks about what's included in all these different things. This box actually has the vent controller in it, and this other box over here came with the, uh, the tube motors and also uh, some of the adapters to adapt the motors to the roll bars. So if we go ahead and we open up the box, there's a lot of packing peanuts in here. I went ahead and I threw them out already. I wanted to kind of show uh, what comes inside of this system. What we have here is uh, this PosiClass controller on the bottom. That's what we're actually going to use to set our temperatures and, uh, and some of the information that we're actually going to use that's going to operate the control system. This top box is kind of a contractor's box. These flaps uh, open up. There's a little squeeze lever on the side that allows you to open up the latches. And then there's a gasket in here, so at first it can actually be difficult to open up. Inside of here, there's instructions that come that talk about both the controller and uh, and the wiring of the device. And then there's some packaging material, and it does say in here, please remove this before installing. If we take this out, you can actually see all of the major uh, major kind of components that are built into the system. This particular system is a low voltage system, and you'll notice that here on the inside of the door, there's actually a wiring diagram showing how all of these different things uh, go together. With, our, with this vendor, we get various different components, and sometimes the exact specific things change over time. One of the things we really like about working with them is that they're always improving their product. So some things might not look exactly like this, but all of this stuff is, uh, is comparable as far as what it does for us. Basically, this entire thing is pre-wired. We've got a thermostat wire right here that's got some length to it. Typically, we would try to put this in the center of the high tunnel. And then there's a power cable. This whole thing is pre-wired, so this just can plug into standard power. So this is a low voltage system. It might actually have different requirements for conduit and uh, how to actually you know, safely run this inside of the system. But basically, all we really need to do is take this box. We're going to drill a hole in the side of the box put a waterproof connector in it, and then we're going to run the two wires that come from each motor into this box. We're going to hook them up into these fuse uh, time relays and make sure that, we, that it all works correctly. They do label this. In this case, it actually says black wire and white wire on both sides. The actual motors themselves, the wires are a different color, and again, that has to do with the fact that a lot of these systems are used with interchangeable controllers and interchangeable parts. Really proud of, kind of how they package it and how it all works. So the second box here, again, I kind of already removed some of the packing material to make it easy to show you. There are a couple of major things. There's two sets of these motors inside of the system, and there's also a small package of parts. This package of parts includes the adapter to adapt the motor to the roll bars, as well as some hardware and some instructions on how all of this is mounted. Uh, there's different motors that we've gotten over the years and they just keep getting better in design and in quality from this vendor, which I like. But basically this motor has these rollers on it that allow this to go up and down on a guide pipe. So as this rotates and it rolls up or down the curtain, this whole motor will actually go up and down with that guide pipe. This particular version of this motor has uh, two different adjustment knobs in here. The Phillips head allows you to unscrew these uh, adjustment knobs. It kind of might be hard to see in the video, but there's actually a little peg off the bottom of either of these components. And as it turns, this red peg hits this red limit switch, and the black peg hits the black limit switch. And that's what stops it from raising up and down and stopping it in the up position and the down position. So we actually have the ability relatively easily right on the motor to control the positions and the, uh, all the way up and all the way down. This comes with about 10 linear feet of wire. It is a 24 volt motor. There are two wires right here, even though I said the colors are different. Um, these two wires are what's gonna get fed into the control system. Since we can run this motor in both directions, 
it's uh, really easy to actually switch the directions of the motor. Since it's a DC motor, we can actually switch it. If you're running the motor and it's, if it's running the opposite direction that you need, you can switch the wires and it'll change the direction of the motor. What that allows us to do is actually mount both motors on the same side or the same end of the building. So all we're going to do is basically mount the control box. We're going to run our wire on one side directly into the control box. On the other side, we need a little bit of additional wire, so we're going to put a junction box in. We'll run the wire from the motor to the junction box, and then from the junction box all the way over to the controller. These guys do a great job kind of pre-wiring it. Um, there's a lot of instructions that comes with it, and they, they also provide a tremendous amount of customer support. So if there's any questions about this system, I would feel free to call, uh, call the vendor directly and ask for that support. This is a complicated system for sure. Um, this is not something that should really be installed without someone who's got experience, uh, experience using this stuff. And ideally, you would really use an electrical contractor to properly install this system. Now that we've gone over the components, I'm going to go ahead and wire this all up on the bench to make sure that everything's working functional, working exactly how I want it. Then once I've got it all trialed and got it all tested, we'll then go out, mount it to the structure, and then make sure that everything works once it's all installed. We're working on the automated roll-up ventilation system for this high tunnel. So what we have is uh, our control unit, our contractor's box. We've got two of the 24-volt DC motors. First thing that we're always going to do when we work with components like this is we're going to bench test everything. If anything's not working right or there's any problems, I want to know about it right now before I go ahead and go through all the energy of mounting all of these components. The control box itself is actually going to be, when it's hardwired, it's going to be different than how we're going to bench test it. It's really easy when we bench test it just to go ahead and run the wires directly into the panel and make sure that we're getting everything correct. When we put it in for real, we're going to go ahead and use these knockouts, wire it all up, and go through that effort of really mounting it correctly. The other thing that I really uh, like about trying to bench test these things is it's also an opportunity to really learn how the device works. You can take this, you can sit down at your you know, kitchen table, figure everything out, and it's also recommend not only kind of testing it to make sure that things work, but I would go ahead and actually learn how the controller works in that environment as well. That way when you put it up, not only have you kind of tested that the motors work, you also know how it works. So if there's any problems, you can know right away when you're actually trying to get this thing working as it's installed. It's a lot easier just to figure it all out, test it, and then really learn how the thing works all on a bench. So specifically, if you can come a little closer, um, what we're doing here is we have uh, our two different motors. Since they're a DC motor, to change the direction of the motor, all we have to do is switch the lines. There's only two cords that come out of each of these motors. Although the, motor, the motors themselves, have, a, in this case, have a brown and a blue wire, it is labeled black and white wires. It doesn't actually matter. The point is, is that this controller can be used for a lot of different uh, applications. So it's really just important that we get them into the right spot. You can see here on the diagram that it talks about the motor wires coming in and it tells you where to put them. These different fuses are actually in the way, so to, to install this, you've got to pull these fuse blocks out. The fuses are on the back side of it, and then that goes in and allows you to unthread the Phillips head bolts to get them in. So I've done that to both sides, and I just have my motors going in and working. There's two extra fuses that came in taped to this box, so if anything stops working, one of the first things you can do is you can pull out these fuses, you can look at them, or with a multimeter or a conductivity tester, you can test if the fuses are good. So what we're going to do to try this out is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the fuses in where they go. Again, this, is, this, is, this particular control unit is designed to run two motors at the same time. Now, it's really important that if you don't know what you're doing, that this can, this can be a safety hazard. You don't want anybody to get shocked. So dumb things like, before I turn it on, I'm just going to try to close the lid and try to do this safely. I've got my power coming in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these things. So i got both of my motors running. I've already bench tested this to make sure that they worked, and what I did is I actually got each motor to work independently. When I plug this in, whatever's going on with the settings of the controller, it may actually turn the motors right on, and I think it will, to allow them to go either to that full open or full closed state. So as I plug this in, we don't have any power. I'm going to get the power hooked up and we're going to continue the video. So we've got everything pre-wired and now we're going to try to uh, plug it in and bench test everything. As we plug this in, 
The motors are going to turn on if they're not already set in their full open or closed position. When we turn it on, yo, this is the thermostat wire. The controller will automatically tell you the temperature it is outside. And it also has different light indicators telling you the status of where it's at. As these motors are turning, right, they're actually both working. And what they're doing is they're going to the full on or off position. When you're trying to figure out how to adjust the motors, I was taught that the best way to do it is actually to get the knobs of the limit switches so that it basically only goes open or closed for a small amount of time. Each of these has a blue, has a red and a black limit switch. This clear casing allows you to see that the knob that is actually the limit for that motor goes back and forth. So we can see the shaft turning on the underside, but to adjust it, we can loosen this Phillips screw, rotate it all the way up so it's barely touching the limit switch and then tighten it back down again. So when the motor comes, this one right here, I'm gonna unplug this. This one right here actually comes and you can see on the side, the red limit switch knob or the bump on the limit switch. And on here, there's a black one. So when this came, they came all the way down. So what I'm gonna do is loosen the Phillips head bit and I'm gonna rotate them up towards the center so that they're barely touching the limit switch on the top, but not quite making that contact and causing it to stop. I'm gonna tighten that one up again. I'm gonna do the same thing on the red side, loosen this up, move that bump so it comes down and it's just inside. Playing around this with a little bit, you'll learn which direction things turn. And again, when you're installing this, if you install them both on the same side of the building, one is actually gonna rotate in the opposite direction of the other. So when I turn this on, or I plug this in, now that I've gone ahead and I've put them in a, in the, in a small position, they're not gonna have very far to travel. Instead of having to wait for this thing to cycle and turn a whole bunch to test it, that actually only ran for a small amount of time. On this control panel, I have an open and close where it says manual operation. So if I want to test everything, what I can do is do the opposite of whatever I just did. So when I press open, now both motors are running, the gears inside them are turning, and those knobs are going up, up against the corresponding limit switch. So one limit switch will be the full up position, and one limit switch will be the full, or the open position, and one limit switch will be the full closed position. Now that I've adjusted them, I only had to run them for a couple seconds to really make sure that both of them are working properly. When we install this, then that will allow us to really fine tune the exact open and close limits that we want. So right now we're just making sure everything works. The easiest way to do that is to only have them open and close a little bit. And that way when we install this to our roll bars and we're getting trying to get exactly our start and stop points for the roll bars, we have the ability to kind of then open up the limit of how long they can go and adjust it as need be. The other thing to be aware of when it comes to these limit switches is that different times of the year, different temperatures, they're going to need to be adjusted. Plastic will shrink and grow depending on the temperature. So these limit switches are going to be used not only when we first install this setup, but they're also going to be used after we get it installed based on how that plastic is shrinking or expanding. Now that I know that everything work, is working properly, what I'm going to do is unplug everything. I'm going to take the wires out. I'm going to pop them through my knockouts. I'm actually going to mount the panel. I'm going to mount the motors. I'm going to start wiring up, wiring it all up for real.